Hey, what's up? My name's Grim from Grim Reaper, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. What's it like up in Canada these days? Canada? Uh, I don't know. John Asher's through Canada. I am down here in the lovely state of Texas. Oh, I thought you were way up there. I didn't know. I thought John just did Canadian stuff. No, he does all the way down here, I guess. Oh, nice. I've known yeah. John for 100 years, so he's a great guy. Yeah, he's really cool. So is Texas, is it open? It is open sesame. I think everyone's, I mean, I'm up in the panhandle close to Oklahoma. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people are still, you know, following protocol and whatnot, but uh, mandates are lifted and I think concerts are going to start soon. So I'm super excited about that. Man, I can't wait for that to happen. Oh, I know. Me too. I've been waiting for that for a while. Yeah. It's been, well, I guess everybody's in the same boat a little over a year since my last show. Right. Right. Which one did you go to or what was your last show? The last thing I was on was 70,000 tons of metal and the, that cruise ship that goes out of Florida. And the last show I saw was Emperor. Uh, a re- an emperor reunion at like two o'clock in the morning on a, the last night of the cruise. You know, I'm sure that killed. Oh my God. Great stuff. If you've yeah, never been on 70,000 tons, I, I suggest that it's amazing. No, I know. I've seen videos. Who's who is your favorite act on the boat or just in general yeah. on the uh, boat? I think the favorite, my favorite show, cause I've gone a bunch of times now. I think my favorite show of all time on the boat is um, I saw moon spell. Mm-hmm on a again it was like super late at night like two or three in the morning but there was sort of rough waves and there was uh like a mist coming over from the ocean and it was an outdoor stage on the back deck and all everything aligned and it was just like magical if that makes any sort of sense oh absolutely that sounds like it it was pretty far back though but anyway we didn't come to talk about me let's talk about grim reaper tell me uh, for those not familiar with you give me the two room two sentence boardroom pitch All right. Grim Reaper is the solo project of myself sitting in a bedroom making music uh, while also stealing the name of one of the great 80s metal bands. Um, We've talked to them on the show. I'm sure you have. And, uh, you know, it's nothing towards them. My last name is Grim with two M's. So it was originally a play on words uh, of my name. I really liked bands who did that, notably um, Breaking Benjamin. And so that's Mm -hmm. always just been what I was called as a kid playing sports, even in high school, when I did, you know, made a good play in football or whatever. Oh, he's right. the grim reaper. Um, my dad was in the military forever. And and so that was kind of his badass nickname too. And so it just made sense for, for a metal act, extreme right. metal. So. Um, so, I mean, but people can't confuse you because music wise, you're, you couldn't be more different. Exactly. I mean, exactly. you're extremely, extremely heavy when you're writing though. Are you writing? I mean, since it's all yourself, are you writing like, how it's going to come across on the album or how it's going to cross come across on the stage or do you not worry about live yet? No. Um, and I, just cause it's myself, like you said, I haven't played live yet, but it's a little bit of both. Um, so if you see behind me, I've got some of my influences here. Yes. I've, I've written a few songs with them in mind. Uh, my, my first song on my debut album, the tragedy of being it's called minds mirrors meshing together, which is, basically the name of Minds Mirrors, a song from Meshuggah's Catch 33 um, concept album. And it, it's basically written to pay homage to them. Um, but some of my other styles include like Five Finger Death Punch or Disturbed, more of that new metal 2000s age, just, you know, boom, heavy pow rock. And I kind of combine those styles in my music. Um, I do write with live choreography in mind because I, I love, for example, how Meshuggah carries themselves on stage and, and they're kind of, I don't know. It's like cutting loose ver- in a synchronized headbanging pattern at the same time. That's just awesome with their wacky music. Um, so I kind of write with both in mind. Do you think that with some of your stuff is pretty technical and intense? Do you think that's going to be difficult to translate into it if you, when you do get to the live setting? Um, I've thought about that before. And, you know, with a drummer and everything, I'm going to give him some room to work with fills and whatnot. There's only going to be a, a few things that have to be on time. Um, since I, I programmed the drums and everything. Um, so I, I just did some simple fills in there with my first time doing all of right. this, but I, I don't think it's going to be too hard to translate as long as everyone's on the same page. And 
I, I could have written everything for technicality's sake, you know what I'm saying? Because um, yeah. I think a lot of metal bands that have emerged from this Meshuggah prog gent age of, of calculating when to hit the snare on these weird off beats and stuff. Right. That's awesome. And I, I, I enjoy a fair bit of that music, um, but I didn't write for technicality's sake. I wrote, you know, what, what rocked in my world, um, but not to be too technical, I guess, just whatever flowed. Right. So along those same lines, then, how does it make you feel when the energy and the calculation that you're talking about now comes to life and then connects with the listener? Well, I mean, it, it's awesome, but I, I really do think it's kind of a hit or miss. You know, you either love that kind of, of thing or you hate it. And like you said earlier, it could be hard to translate across. You know, I do know that with sounds, more notes, I guess, and different pitches for everything is harder to translate across a big space. Right. So for, for sound purpose quality, I think the thing that hits more is just, you know, four by four power chords with a synchronized drum beat sure. that just boom, boom, boom over a space of a large room versus, you know, I don't know, like a dragon force solo or something, unless right. you have really good sound engineers, it, it's just kind of a hit or miss. Okay. So switching to the uh, the record now, how did you guys cover the, or how did you come about covering the baby metal tune? Yeah, man. Um, I, I was in school. I'm still pretty young. And I, I kind of discovered them when I was first starting uh, university. Um, and I've been a Dragon Force fan forever. So when I heard that song from them, I think that was like the first one I heard. I thought, wait a second, this sounds like like a Japanese Dragon Force. What, what's going on here? So I started listening to it and looking behind the scenes and, oh, hey, those guitarists actually wrote the guitar parts for that song and kind of worked with them there. Thought, awesome. Um, as the years went by and I got better at guitar, I thought, well, I could cover that song. Maybe not well, but I could do it. Right. And so I, I tuned it down to C because that's what my strings were already. And I, I played out the melody and I thought, okay, I could hit those notes as far as um, the, the octaves goes with a male voice. Right. Um, I, I looked at the direct translation of the lyrics. Um, so I didn't translate them myself. I just looked at what was literally translated. Mm -hmm. it took the same meaning because they, they it, it talks about, I don't know, cliche, I guess, concepts like being true to yourself and climbing the mountain and going through life and swimming through the oceans. Pretty akin to Dragon Force lyrics. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that whole so power metal. Metal. Yeah. The mountain. And oh, I, I love that power metal uh, topics there. So I thought, okay, great. I'm going to rewrite it in a way that makes sense to me in English. Um, but that also goes with the the concept of my record. Cause it's, it's more or less a concept album right. where it all flows together with a certain lyrical concept. Um, so I kind of wrote it in where it would fit with the record, but also staying true to the original, you know, power metal esque meaning. Right. What um you mentioned the concept. What do you want your fans to take away from, or is there a message you want your fans to take away after listening to a Grim Reaper record? Well, this this first record, the tragedy of being, um, in in a sentence or two, the, the argument of the record is that it, kind of the same as the Buddhists' argument of life, or or even the Christians' view of life, where where life is suffering. And, and that's the, the ultimate condition that everyone finds themselves in and, and has found themselves in for all time. But the, the way to act and carry yourself forward in spite of that tragedy of existence is to take on the most responsibility you can and move through it in spite of the, the horrible and tragic conditions of existence. Right. So, but, and I don't know if this is uh appropriate enough, but uh, more like a cycle of rebirth and death sort of thing. Absolutely. And that the record actually starts with a cycle of, of rebirth and death and goes through a few of them. So the, the first song kind of goes through what it's like to, to have your, your paradigms shattered, a complete anomalous catastrophe of, of the psyche, let's say, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. An example of that in life would be, you know, a, a close family member dying right. or a career loss or, you know, a foreclosure on your house. And then you're on the street or something, just something that completely shatters you um, and, and kills you. And then you have to remove and, and rekindle your aim sort of thing. It's all very, you know, abstract and kind of wishy-washy sort of thing. It goes off of um, uh, 
a, a psychological series or a, a lecture series on YouTube by the psychologist Jordan Peterson mm -hmm. uh, called The Psychological Significance of the Biblical Stories. And then in that series, what he does is he basically takes the Old Testament biblical stories that our culture has kind of said, you know, I don't know what to do with, or that's just an old book or whatever. And he kind of takes out, aside from religion, take the religious concept aside, what are the the beneficial ideas of those stories that right. humans have loved and have stayed with for thousands and thousands of years. Also, those ideas have, have really permeated cross-culturally told in different stories. And right. so I've taken those, not the stories themselves per se, although I do have a song talking about Abraham and his covenant with God mm -hmm. and what that idea means, but I've taken what that dissection of those ideas has meant to me and then put them all through the record in a process that symbolizes, I guess, a very condensed pathway through life, starting at death and rebirth. That's interesting because uh, I'm actually working on my master's in uh, world religion and philosophy, and I, I find that stuff quite interesting. So that's yeah. why I, I know it's kind of off track from what we're from Grim Reaper, but it's still very interesting stuff. No, that's awesome. Um, are you planning on doing any sort of like live stream or something with Grim Reaper during this whole since we can't go anywhere? No, I know that's right. And, you know, to be honest, I'm, I'm once I get this thing rolling, I'm going to try and find some musicians around here, which is hard because I'm in Texas in a part of Texas where people don't uh, I don't know. Let's just say they wear cowboy boots instead of sure. jackets with patches. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, I, I, I took a lot of footage of my recording process and it's not just the recording process for this record. I think people are really going to connect with it because I'm a new artist, just point blank. Right. And this is my, it's not just my first album. It's my first time learning all of the things like, okay, well, from how do I play guitar? How do I write songs? How do I record the songs? How do I get them sounding good? How do I send them off? Um, sure. And just over the last two year process, it's just been constantly failing over and over and over and over and over, right. you know, and failing forward, I guess, um, to a point where, Hey, now I have my first record out. Um, now but, what, you, what? Now what do you do? Right. It's just, you just, yeah plug and through it's almost like uh i'm about to release the metal version of cyberpunk just without all the hype <laughs> right but uh i mean shoot i just lost my train of thought your music is not only a new artist but your music is timely i think especially that message with all this shit that we're going through at the moment right absolutely it's uh you know, and the world has suffered pandemics and, and devastations before too. And, and a lot of people have all these thoughts, especially being isolated now when your mind has nowhere else to go of, well, is the world going to end? What's going to happen with all of the government chaos worldwide and, and money problems and everything? And I just kind of think, you know, I, I get that. And I've thought that too. But I also think, man, what did the people in World War II think? They probably thought they were going to die. And they probably thought the world was literally going to end with atomic power coming to fruition. Sure. Same in the Cold War. I mean, my parents and, and their um, peers had to do desk drawers where they get under their desks at elementary school. So I did that as well. Yeah, okay. I remember. Yeah. In case, I don't know what the desk would have done if you were attacked by. Right. But yeah, I guess it's insane. just for posterity, you know. Yeah, that's kind of and we actually had to go in the hallways too at, for some drills and like, you know, hands against the wall because they were big cement buildings or whatever. Right. But it is time and I think that message and I, I honestly feel weird talking about it because I am so young and I it just it almost feels like I'm trying to give advice to everyone. And that's really not my my point here. That's not my uh, um, attempt or anything, because it, it's really, like I said, just what those ideas meant to me and how it just absolutely tore down my paradigms spiritually and how the world works. Um, and then kind of rebuilding from there. But um, it is timely to do too in this, in this age of uncertainty where take up your cross and, and bear it the best you can, no matter what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. Cause nobody has any, any clue with it. And it's, you're at an interesting time in the music business as well, because there is, well, I hate to say this, but no music business. How do you plan on promoting this? I mean, besides doing podcasts, is there, you have a, a game plan? Um, the business has to reinvent itself, right? There's no way it comes back the same way. Absolutely. Especially if, you know, worst case scenario shows are, are off the table for, for most of the places in the world, world tours for the next decade or whatnot. So um, the loose plan is to, uh, well, the, the goal, man, I think this is for every artist, even, even in the rap game, um, which I am not into. Can, can right. you tell by my appearance? <laughs> um, <laughs> the least qualified rapper out there. But uh, 
would be to have, you know, a completely independent push of all of your content. And like you said, maybe there is no music business. I, I do think, and maybe you would agree too, that we're at a point where it's the easiest time in the world ever to get your stuff out there and to produce it at a high level and to get exposure and everything. But it's the hardest time in the world to grab anyone's sort of attention. Yeah. Cause everybody's oversaturated. Exactly. So, you know, long-term, uh, or, you know, Hail Mary attempts at fame or recognition that I see a lot of young artists doing, or just doing something really wacky and crazy and making a fool of yourself. Um, and I guess the only thing I've done there besides podcasts and stuff, since it's only me and I have like all that, you know, paradigm confusion there is I've kind of created a few personalities within the band, one being myself as the artist, um, mm -hmm. and then another version and his name is Logan, which is my first name. And he, right. he's the, he's the band manager who rails Coke and does hookers and, and right. manages the band really, really well. Doesn't really know what he's doing. I just, I don't know, man, it sounds odd, but I can't give myself an outlet to be serious unless I have an outlet to be silly. I just feel. Sure. Too, and I think, too. I think you need both of those anyway, especially in the, uh, in our current situation, you definitely need to be able to be silly and laugh and, Cause it's fucked up no matter how you look at it. And so you definitely need that sort of outlet from being serious all the time. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And you know, for another plan to, to push and market and everything, I've been contacting other artists and other solo musicians. And I found like, Whoa, it's not just me, which is great. Um, Cause then people can tell me what to do and what I'm doing wrong and how to make everything better. But there are so many solo musicians out there. My, my friend, Jonathan, um, from Fierce Deity was on your guys. Oh, he's been on here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he was one of the first ones I found that had did his own thing. And right. So, you know, hit him up and we're actually doing a giveaway right now for all of our listeners. Just go to my Instagram at Grim Reaper with two M's USA on Instagram or Fierce Deity on Instagram. Hit the link in the bio. We're giving away three t-shirts. It's a $60 value. So go ahead and cop your chance to win. Nice. It's through the 19th. So go register for your chance to win. So that's awesome. All right, cool. I hope that wasn't too bad. No, that was fun. I appreciate it. Awesome. You have a great day and I'll let you know when it's up. Yeah. Thanks for having me All on. Right. You take care. Yeah. Be well, my friend. You too. Bye-bye.